of hope and promise. God, there is so much worry and anxiety around the world. Things seem so unsettled and unstable, and yet the story of faith reminds us to hope for the future. Let us see the possibilities that always come with birth. Help us to be people of hope. Help us live out your hope and justice. God, through wise ones of old, you show us a vision of what could be. Through mystics and prophets of today, you challenge our vision of the present. Remind us of that vision of peace and justice. Empower us to live as if we believe it was really possible. God, today, there are many who wonder where their next meal will come from. Today, there are many who look for work and income. Today, there are many who look for meaning in the face of life's disappointment. God, centuries later, we hear again the promise of Dane Julian that all will be well, all manner of things be well. And part of us finds it to be unbelievable that such a promise could be true. When you, our despair grows and the shadow threatens to overcome the light, remind us that we are people of hope. When we are tempted to find relief from the present and trying to recreate the past, call us to be people of the future. When life's music has faded or become a funeral dirge, teach us to sing your praise, O oh God. Teach us to sing with notes formed by hopes and acts of justice. Teach us to sing with harmonies shaped by mercy's wide embrace. May all the earth join the chorus and dance to your beating heart. Let us pray. God of our weary years, God of our silent tears, God who has brought us this far along the way, it's once again that we come thanking you for this great day that you have made. We are choosing to rejoice and be glad in it, allowing us to see the last day of the first month of 2021. We are grateful for your mercies, your compassions are new every morning, and your faithfulness is great to us. We thank you, God, that we celebrate not only the mission of New Bethel today, but the mission of your Christ to the world. In the day of age, of sorrow, grief, despair, uncertainties, and distrust, 
we trust in your word because your word is the same. It changes not. Though the flower fades and the grass withers, your word stays the same. We thank you, God, for your word being our guiding spirit, the way instructing us in the paths of righteousness. We pray, God, that as we go forth through the rest of this new month of February, honoring our ancestors and honoring those who served you before us, we ask, God, that you be merciful to us. We pray for those who are suffering, for those who are in need of comfort because of the loss of loved ones, for those who are in need of a touch from you, healing, power, whatever it may be. We thank you, Father, for your love never fails. Bless us in this time together. Bless us in our worship experience. We ask this in your son's name. Amen. I will read the scripture. And the scripture will be 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9 through 10. And he has said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for power is perfection in weakness. Most gladness, therefore, I would rather boost about my weakness so that the power of Christ may dwell in me. Therefore, I am well content with weakness, with insult, with depression, distress, with persecution, with difficulty, for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. I don't feel no ways time Come too far from where I started from Nobody told me that the road would be My name is Ida Porter from uh, New Bethel and New Hope. Uh, I was asked a question and I will read it to you just in case I make a mistake. How can you find hope in a difficult time? Okay, for me, how I find hope for a difficult time is when we had uh, all of this bad, whatever's going on in the world, I get up in the morning being thankful to wake up, number one. And when I open my window, 
and the sun comes in and I see the bright sunshine, I know God is on my side. That's what makes me so happy. Then I can go back if I want to and lay back down in my bed and thank God for the bed he gave me was rest so well. And I'm just thankful right now to be able to share that with you. And I hope it will help someone that uh, may be having a difficult time in this time. So I thank you for your time. And this is what my answer. So I have a question for you then. So how would you um, give advice to someone else who's having trouble during these difficult times? The, what, what I would say, it, it doesn't work for everyone. Okay. Because um, when I look out and see a new day and whether the sun is shining or whether it's raining, I'm thanking God for bringing me from last night to this morning. So it just makes me happy to know that uh, he is the one that caused me to be here. So if you got any doubt, talk to God about it. That's the advice I give. The year 2020, one for the ages. I think it's safe to say it's not on a list of a very good year. The family that prays together stays together. In this ever-changing world we live in, it is good to always have a little talk with Jesus. As a family, there are questions. We are searching for answers. What do we tell our children, family, and friends? Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. My good friend, Diane Christine Milton, wrote this Q&A session titled, Be Encouraged to Face the Future. What do you do when your back is up against the wall? You've lost loved ones to COVID-19 and other illnesses. There is shortage in cleaning supplies and you can't be around your seasoned loved ones without a mask or two. Crime is on the uprise. You and the floor are on a first name basis. Gunshots are in the air and it seems as though no one cares. Lord, what can I do and how do I make it? The answer is trust in the Lord and lean not to your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. Just keep calm and carry on. You can't give up, for there is a blessing on the other side up through. You've come too far to quit. Lord, strengthen us to do your will. I don't feel no ways tired, for God is with us. He's on our side. But my rent is due, my mortgage, and my job is gone. I got hard times, groceries are low, and I don't have nowhere to go. Just look to the hills, keep praying and keep pressing on. The scripture says, and let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we will reap if we don't give up. My children are doing their schoolwork in virtual learning. They can't go out to play. But you can't give up, my child. Look to Jesus. He's the way. He'll guide you over hills and mountains. You can make it. You can take it. For there is no problem that he can't solve. God will see you through it all. I'm sick in my body. The pain is more than I can bear. My blood was made for a ransom. Can't you see? I promise to take care of thee. My son is afraid of the people he meet. He's afraid to go out in the streets. We can't assemble inside the church. My spirit is sorrowful. I can't feel the joy as such. What time I am afraid, I will trust in thee. He's what a sustainer and a provider should be. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in the time of trouble. He'll restore your joy like no other. The White House is in an uproar. People running rampant. No peace in store. The National Guard is in place. No peace 
and the love has waxed cold in the race. But you can't give up, my friend. God promised to go with you till the end. I know an eternal God, and he's always there. He knows, yes, he knows just how much we can bear. So here's my story. What's your reply? Praise him and give him glory. Keep calm and carry on. Finally, my brother, just stay strong. Lo, I'm with you in the storm. Keep the faith, keep calm, and just hold on. What you've seen in our presentation today is a display of how we can get hope in the midst of all that we're experiencing today. We're experiencing challenging times, but I stand to extend the invitation of Christian discipleship to those who may be in the midst of despair, discouragement, any other thing, any other ailment of life. The answer is in Jesus Christ. So I extend the invitation of Christian discipleship to you. The gospel message is that Jesus Christ came, he died, he rose again from the dead, and that he will bring salvation to you. Um, if you are in need of salvation, simply confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that God raised Jesus Christ from the dead, and you shall be saved. If you made that confession and you're looking for a home to fellowship with, we invite you to join New Bethel. Come and worship with us. Even though we're worshiping virtually, you're still able to worship with us in a virtual uh, worship experience. And we thank you for those of you who have uh, accepted Christ and those of you who thought it not robbery to join our fellowship. We thank you so much. Thank you uh, for joining us during our Sunday mission service. Thanks to all our participants and musicians as well. We know that during these difficult times, our pathways are different, but may God continue to lead you and guide you and protect you along the way. Thank you. All right. Thank you, uh, Sister Ramona, for uh, your words. And I echo them. Thank you to all who participated in this mission service program. Uh, just... Uh, because we didn't do a formal offering, I just want to encourage those of you who would like to give to support New Bethel that you can give by way of Givelify or you can give your gift to the physical address of the church. Both should be on the screen. And we thank you for supporting us in the work of New, Meth New Bethel. Um, I also want to take this time to invite you to all our weekly activities at Sunday school, Sundays at 9 o'clock by way of our teleconference and our Bible study at noon on Tuesday by way of Facebook Live. So take advantage of all those worship activities that we have here at Duke Bethel, and we're looking forward to continuing to serve God and you in the newness of life. Having said all of that, um, let us close out with the missionary benediction. In the name of the triune God, may the spirit of Christian mission enter every heart. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you.